Hi, my name's Jason Andrews. Um, I am a runner as of the last year or so. I'm 48 years old and next weekend I will be doing a marathon. It's the third time I've done a marathon. Um, the last one I did was in 2018. It was four hours and 26 seconds. And previous to that I did one about 2002, 2002. Um, in four hours and 23 minutes and um, what struck me both times when I was doing the training for those marathons is I really didn't know what pace I was aiming for and I didn't know how you could make a reasonable guess at the pace um, that you should be aiming for given the training volume that you're doing so this time I've um, been on YouTube and I've search for various resources trying to find out what is the uh, the best way to plan a marathon and I stumbled across um, I'm just going to search the details I stumbled across a podcast um, called the extra mileist um, and it's by a guy called Floris Gearman and he did a very interesting interview with um, a marathon runner uh, called Josh Sambrook and Josh brought up um, uh, some research by an Italian called Giovanni Tanda um, and in a nutshell Giovanni had um, taken the key metrics, the key statistics, uh, paces, durations, best efforts, a load of data, thrown it all into a pot. I think it was 23 running so it's quite a small sample um, and he distilled a formula for race prediction um, and you can find that and a few people have been talking about it online now um, there's a website called Tanda Race Predictor and so basically the idea is that you put in your average weekly volume over an eight week period so forget the week of your marathon the eight weeks prior to that week you need to work out what your weekly average volume is in terms of kilometers or miles and what your average pace is. And based on that, it will give you a prediction on your running time. So that's what I've been using. Now off the back of that, I found another website, um, which is fantastic, called CRPLOTS, C-R-P-L-O-T-S dot com. And that's um, a fantastic, fantastic resource. Um, and that basically lets you track a whole load of key statistics um, if you link it to a Strava account. Um, presumably, you've got a GPS watch. Your GPS watch is linked to Strava to record all your runs, and then G, uh, sorry, CR Plots then pulls the data from Strava and gives you some extra analysis. I'm just going to flip my phone around and show you what the screen looks like. There's a whole load of other information, but this is the predicted marathon time. And this is what I've been working to. So you can either run high volumes at a low intensity or low volumes at a high intensity to get the same effect. But it's a really good way of letting you track your progress. And at the moment, it is forecasting that I will be able to run a three hour, 26 minute and 40 second marathon. So 3.26.40, which will be quite a significant chunk off my PB. So I will cut to after the race, which is in seven days time, and let you know how well that prediction goes. 36.98. Cramping up, can't run anymore. Pace is dropping off anyway, but I just every time I try and run, left leg cramps up, right one's twinging. Just walking out, walking it off for a bit. So, see what happens. As you can see from that last clip, I was struggling at the end of the marathon. Um, I had uh, quite quite bad leg leg cramps. Um, so yeah, just to review what happened, uh, I didn't run 3.26.40, I 
surprise, surprise, I didn't think I would. Um, I was a little bit coldy a few days before the marathon. And so on the Saturday, I really had to make a decision um, whether to run it on the Sunday or not. Um, it's a bit hit or miss. I almost decided not to, but I'd done so much training, had a good taper. I thought, what the hell? Quickly checked some online resources to see what the advice was. And basically a mild cold shouldn't really be an issue. So I booked my hotel, went down to Chichester because the race was in Goodwood, a Goodwood racetrack and, uh, got a good night, as good night's sleep as I could. Anyone that's done a marathon knows you're probably going to sleep a few hours the night of the marathon, before the marathon. Um, and then took a lem sip in the morning and uh, hoped it, everything would go to plan. Um, <clears throat> based on my Tanda predicted time of 2.26.40, I set off um, at a goal pace of 4.53 per kilometre <clears throat> and actually was running faster than that for the first 10 kilometres, um, foolishly. Um, and I managed to hang on to that pace to, to the halfway point um, but I could I started to feel that I was going to struggle and uh, I think I was still uh, on for a sub three and a half at about 27 kilometers and then everything fell apart and my pace dropped off dramatically um, the next few kilometers until I reached about 37 kilometers I had leg cramps, I had to walk for a, about a minute to get them, get rid of them. And then I was basically just doing what I could to um, maintain a, a, a jogging pace without cramping up. So I, I would jog to sort of a threshold of cramp and then have to slow the pace down a bit, recover a bit. And then I was just taught, playing with that, where that pace was. So the last, 5k I did in about 31 minutes um, to finish uh, 3 hours, 43 minutes and 48 seconds. So it's kind of what I was expecting really. I got to the sort of 25k mark um, at my goal pace and then started to slow down a little bit. And then by the time I was at 30k, it had fallen off a cliff and I was just... Damage and imitation, trying to go for my B goals, C goals, D goals. Um, but I think it's great, actually. I think I now have, I think if I'd have paced it differently, I could have knocked four or five minutes off and done about 340. So that gives me a good indication of where to aim for next time. So I will continue to use the Tanda race predictor and crplots.com uh, to track my and a predicted time um, but now I've got an offset I think Josh alluded to this he said you know once you've used it once and you've, you kind of see where you are against the predictor then um, <clears throat> you can plan your training volume and your load and your intensity and uh, you'll have a better understanding of where realistically you can pace yourself so I think I uh, my next race is in or my next marathon race is in April in Brighton in 2023 so I've got six months to train um, so I'm really looking forward to it I think I will plan my training volume to be higher I think I'm going to focus more on longer slower runs and try and um, make up the difference in training load with the volume rather than the intensity I still have some speed work um, I'll try and stick to the 20-80 rule, 20%, 80% rule. So 20% intense, high intensity and everything else, low intensity. Um, I think I'm going to try and do a few more long runs this time. I, th I think I did three or four over 30K. I'll maybe try and do five or six or seven. Um, but yeah, I'm optimistic. I think if I can plan a, a, a tandem predictor time I'll plan my training so that I'm aiming at a time of around 3.10 to 3.14. And then I know I'm going to go a good 10 to 12 to 15 minutes over that. And that gives me a good shot of doing a sub three and a half. Um, so all in all, yeah, probably didn't work because I'm old and a bit coldy. And don't have a massive, massive 
uh, back history of years and years of running. But yeah, it's still, still a useful tool and one which I'm going to continue to use. So I hope you found those resources uh, interesting and this video useful. And uh, I'll do another one in April.